48 years ago, on a bridge in Selma, Alabama, a place that very few people knew about in this country, black and white, Catholic and Christian and Jewish people decided to take on Jim Crow in one of his most vicious form that was denial of voting rights. The 15th Amendment in 1870 had said that no one could deny or bridge anyone of the right to vote. And nearly 100 years later, that right was still denied throughout the South through literacy tests, people being forced to read the Constitution backwards, through poll taxes, people having to pay to vote the grandfather clauses that had been implemented years ago and through all forms of intimidation, violent intimidation. And people decided that America's flag was wrinkled with injustice and it needed to be straightened out. And so they gathered their courage, they met at a church, and then they began to march. And it wasn't only African Americans, it was Caucasians, it was people of all um, ethnic group um, and they understood they was on a mission to make it. They was on a mission to cross that bridge. On that day, Bloody Sunday, they were beat. Blood was shed. Young people, children, elderly people. For them to endure the brutality of the sheriff of Selma, Alabama at that time, for them to endure his sticks and the dogs and the water holes and think about all the people that was killed. They were beaten until they were beaten back, but they were not beaten down. And instead of the blood causing them to run, their blood inspired other people to run to Selma. They marched in March. And by the summer, Congress was voting on a Voting Rights Act. There were many votes against it, but justice prevailed. 48 years later, we find ourselves at another kind of Edmunds Pettus Bridge. What are the issues today? The attempt to roll back the Voting Rights Act, race-based gerrymandering and redistricting that stacks, packs, and bleaches black voters and tries to undermine fusion politics between blacks and whites and Latinos. The attempt to revise the poll tax under the disguise of a voter ID bill when there is no evidence of fraud, and yet the persons who push these bills know that in this state alone, more than 600,000 would be immediately affected and driven out of their constitutional right to vote. It's the same practices that were seen by our ancestors and our forefathers during the time of the civil rights struggles when um, the Voter Rights Act was originally passed. So many people died for us to vote, fought for us to vote, you know, gave their lives for us to vote. And if we aren't able to vote or we're, we don't vote, we're doing them an injustice. We're doing our ancestors an injustice. The Voter Rights Act, it gives everyone a right to vote. But the particular part, Section 5, it requires that they get permission from the United States Department of Justice before they change their voting policies or practices. As far as the right wing wanting to pass um, voter identification laws in different states, and of course ours North, being North Carolina. The timeline went from voter identification laws uh, or bills uh, being passed in state legislatures on to them limiting um, early voting, uh, taking away same day registration, taking away Sunday voting, and now it's moved on to the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, who will potentially decide Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and other clauses in it, uh, which could potentially harm voters for, the, for years to come. These policies they're the same, but the name has just changed. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. It's all a game. Um, what I mean by a game, it's all a game to win elections, to make sure that certain populations don't have the opportunity to vote so that you can better appease other populations so that you can gain their vote um, and win elections and get the candidates that you want to see. There's so many huge issues such as poverty that's going on. We should be focusing all of our attention and energy towards other things. Any attempts to limit uh, voter participation um, is a threat to democracy. You can't have democracy with, without voter participation and vast amounts of people, a diverse population of people voting. But it's going to take a team of young adults to really fight these battles head on. That's why we need to all in college, in high school, in middle school, we need to all start um, coming together and tackling these issues that are really going to affect us in the long run.
it's going to be left to us, this generation. Uh, people need to wake up, but we also need to be the ones that um, wake people up. Because uh, we're reverting back uh, to the fights that we had before the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. The different voter ID laws are going to negatively impact young adults. It's really going to hinder um, the, the growth and also the motivation to actually get out and vote. Speaking for me personally, um, my Lord and Savior is Christ. So Christ didn't stand for injustice or threats against people, excluding people, wanting people, keeping people down. If you're going to be Christ-like, if you're of, a, of that faith, if you're going to be Christ-like, then you should be doing the same things that Christ taught about, and that is expanding you know, freedoms for people. Make sure you look out for those who are downtrodden. Be their voice who can't speak up for themselves. We need to put on our gloves, dig in the trenches, and get ready for this battle um, because it is real and it's not going away. And we don't need to revert back to the past. We only need to move forward. These people, they actually died for us. They actually died to protect what we're fighting for now. We're fighting for voter rights. We're fighting for equality. But you can never forget the struggle. If they marched then, if they fought then, if they push the nation forward then, we must resist the nation going backwards now. What do we want? We want to ensure the enforcement of the 15th Amendment and the Voting Rights Act. We want registration on election day. We want more same day registration. We want more Saturday, more Sunday voting to make sure that there are plenty voting sites to ensure that there are no long lines. We want to make sure that the Help America Vote Act monies are properly used. We want to ensure fair redistricting plans that do not undercut fusion politics in the 21st century. What do we want ultimately? We want the establishment of justice. We want everything promised in the Constitution, nothing more and nothing less. That is our fight. So let us stand up now as they stood up then. Let us be strong together, white, black, Latino, young, old, middle-aged, Christian, persons of faith, persons without faith, whoever you are, whatever community, let us stand up together as human beings, as Americans, as people who believe in the fundamental principle of justice, first ordained by God, and then written into the precepts of our Constitution forward together, not one step back.